I'll just start with, with New Year's Day and, and how things went at crew. How did you reflect on the game? Um, I thought it was pretty disappointing, to be fair. Um, a game that we're, we were confident of, of going there and winning and coming away with no points. Uh, it was quite disappointing. I felt like we had, we tried to create enough, probably did create enough to probably win the game, really. I just thought a bit, thought we were a bit naive, really. Uh, I said it after the game in the change room. Just naive, uh, little fouls, not crossing, just wrong decisions in the in important times and important places in the pitch. Uh, I thought just killed the momentum, um, and we just couldn't quite get the goal because uh, I felt like if we we came out at half time <coughs> thinking if we got one we'll probably get two, and um, just didn't quite manage to do that. And um, fair play to them again, defended well, but we've um, got to be a bit, a bit more clinical and <coughs> and not be so naive. And, and conversely, those in, those parts that you mentioned there, have you done those well in retrospect in the run that you that led up to that that crew game? Uh, yeah, I felt like we've been solid. We've felt like we've our well, confidence has grown game by game. Felt like we've if we score first, we more or less feel like we're not going to concede and obviously going to win the game. Um, the confidence was was building and building. Hence why we were, were going there. Thought we were we were going to win, and um, we've been good at the basics, but. One lapse in concentration um, is ultimately cost us um, three points or some points. And um, but it was so early on in the game, we still were still. Like I said we come out half time, think we're still going to win the game, which is which is a good thing to have. And um, just unfortunately, we couldn't quite get over the line. What does it say about the mentality at the moment in the squad and, and the way that you've built that confidence that you spoke about? Yeah, I was just took it by game by game since the manager came in. Um, after the first couple of games, we've we've been pretty solid. Um, just good at the the, uh, the foundations of the game, the basics, and looking after each other, um, pressing together, moving together up the pitch, down the pitch, defending together as a team, looking after your mate, getting your mates back, and um, I thought we did that to an extent on Saturday as well, which would have obviously kept building the confidence. But we just like to say we just let ourselves down just in key moments and key places in the pitch. Do you still think you can be successful this season? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And playoffs being successful or automatic? Yeah, um, I think they're in touching distance just about. Um, we weren't too far off, I think we might have been three games. To be honest, I don't really look at the league table, I just take take it, take it game by game. But um, I'm sure we're just in touching distance and we're not too far away. We know we've got a lot of games coming up, a lot of points to play for. And we're, um, I'll just keep taking it game by game and I'll keep re relaying that message because that's the most important game. Um, it's not Colchester, it's not Salford, it's not... Mansfield, it's whoever's next, it's just the next game, and that's Crawley. And uh, we get three points, and hopefully, teams don't win, and we, we gain some points and keep trying to catch them. When you look around the change room, you look around the training ground, you see your teammates, you see the quality of player in this squad. Do you, do you sense that that is enough to, to keep carrying you up the table? Uh, yeah, but we just need to get better at, like I said, just we, I felt we were a bit naive, um, little fouls, kicking the ball out when we can. Maybe come around the back and play out and just killing the momentum a little bit, letting them get up the pitch and try and maybe play or try and not foul. I know, I know there's so many little fouls that the referee's given. You might not think the fouls, but if you put your arms up, they're going to fall on the floor and they're going to get given and it just kills the momentum a little bit. So we can just get a bit smarter, a bit more, um, let's say, a bit more, well, not naive, whatever the words are, but um, I think that can only help us because we've got the quality and we've got the, we've got the confidence and it's continuing to build. So... We can get better at the little, little bits and bobs of the game. We can um, certainly keep climbing. Is that an art? In yeah, I think it is. Yeah, uh, a lot of it is, a, is experience. I think, um, although the experience lads don't get it right, I didn't get it right on whatever day it was Monday. Um, should have crossed the ball, didn't. Just let the, let that play fizzle out, and before you know it, you're back defending your own goal. It's just little things like that that just need to you just need to be better at, and you need to get it to blob on. And once you do that, you keep. You keep putting the opposition under pressure, and um, ultimately you're going to get chances. For you personally, do, do games sit with you? To play sit with you? Do you do you see certain moments in games, particularly when you're on the back of a defeat, and think it through and again and again and again? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think about just like, like the little things, really. Not like the. It's not the one-on-one -on -one or the <clears throat> the header or whatever it might be. The chance. It. It's just the little things that <sighs> nig away at me. Um, I'm, I'm guilty myself self of doing them sometimes, but it's just 
you sometimes you, the lads probably think the same, but um, just like the little things, like kicking out for a throwing when you could we're losing the game. You can't, we can't afford to be then defending for the next couple of minutes. We need to be can't afford a little foul in the corner. Can't afford not to cross the ball when you've got three strikers in the box. You, you just can't do it because it just kills the momentum. And um, we've got to get better at that. And hopefully we will. Um, but I think majority of it is just getting the basics right, which I think we've been really good at for the past eight games. Yeah, that's been a consistent message from all of the squad when we've had the opportunity to speak with you, is that since the manager has come in, has, has simplified things. What, what has he done for this squad since he's come in? Uh, I think he's just, we've just gone through it on the training pitch, really. Um, we've done some sort of tactics to let the players know what, what's expected of them in each position, where you need to be, where I need to be when the ball's here, the ball's there, ball's there. When we squeeze, who presses, when to press. We back your teammate up, if he presses, you press up. It, it's just the basics, really. And um, But we can all learn at whatever age, age we are, and you learn by on the training field. And if the manager tells you on the training pitch to be there when the ball's there, you're going to be there on the, on the pitch. And if you keep repeating it, like we've done the sessions, same session since he's came in, we're going to repeat that on, on, the, on a Saturday and a Tuesday and a Monday or whatever day we play. But... It's just that really, just doing the basics tactically on the pitch, training pitch so that players know you know exactly what you're doing and you're not going to do anything else because you know what you need to do, you know where to need to be. Full backs know how high they need to be, who they're pressing, when to press and it's just little things like that that sometimes you get away from when results aren't going your way or whatever and uh, I think we've been guilty of that in the past. He's spoken a lot of your importance in this squad and the fact that you are the captain, you are the leader. He's also spoken about other leaders in the squad as well, but I just wonder what he's done for you personally since coming in. Just basically that, just simplified the game really, just trying to stay in the middle of the pitch, let the, the eights press on and me staying in connection with the back three. Uh, obviously not five because we sort of play three, but over the back three, so we've got like protection um, wherever the ball is on whatever side, as long as we're all, all connected, we can deal with that situation. I think it's, it's worked quite well. I think my game's just been simplified with just Basically, protecting the back four and, and second balls. Um, obviously, different style of play that I think really suits my game, but sometimes you do like to get in the ball, so you you, so you do sometimes get caught in, in between. Um, and the gaps sometimes get a little bit stretched, but yeah, just basically just simplifying the game, um, stay in connection with the back four, <coughs> um, second balls, hook the ball on in the channels for the, for the two strikes up front who can cause carnage and we know how much Andy wins in the air so uh, just basically that really and just organising and staying compact and trying to just keep trying to recycle the ball so basically all in all just simplifying it really. And is that ask, that role that you've got now in the system, is that more suited to, to your game and how you've played in your career? Uh, yeah I think so, I think like second balls and that is a is a, um, is a big thing, it's a big thing in any, any league, um, championship, league one, league two second balls is is massive um gets you up the pitch keeps you on the front foot it's massive and it can come can, can make the difference and it does make the difference and um i feel like i'm quite good at that um and the back three behind me have been superb at that really more than more so than what i have um good contacts heading it further clearing it getting the defense turned and um now we just continue to do that because we know if we play in their half and the final third we can cause some damage You've mentioned three levels there, Championship, League One, League Two. And a lot was made about League Two this season, given the teams that were coming up, teams coming down, and that there'd be a lot of spotlight on it. In terms of quality and level, and you've had a good length of time now playing at League Two, are there notable differences? Or as there's quite a lot of similarities? Uh, the similarities, like the basics are similar. Like a lot of teams, I know a lot of teams try to play now, but majority of the teams go pretty direct. And then it is about the second balls and then the quality shows like in the, in the final in the final third really so there is a lot of similarities obviously just the level of opposition the quality of player does really tell the, the levels you go up more so obviously in the championship but where well, there's obviously a lot of money gets spent nowadays but um, no just the basics still, still apply um, even when I was at Blackburn it was it was front foot football it was um, second balls a lot of it and then playing the final third and that's what we're trying to do as long as we get the basics right and you're always going to be in some sort of sniff of the game and have a chance of winning three points. Because um, 
Ultimately, it's really difficult to defend for 90 minutes. Balls turned in behind, uh, players around the ball turn it over. Uh, it's hard to defend. Um, and if we can keep getting better at that, which we can do, um, we can certainly pick up some points. Just finally from me, um, we learnt this week that the club had recalled Jake Young from his loan at Swindon Town. Back with you now as a, a group. How's that been for you to see him back and obviously the goal scoring form that he's been? Um, yeah, it's good. I mean, I've not really seen him, to be honest. He didn't really train today, so um, no, but he's obviously been in great form. Um, played a lot of games, a lot of minutes. He's obviously scored, what, 16 goals with four or five assists, which is is unbelievable numbers, really. So just hopefully he comes back full of confidence, comes back fit, which, don't know if he is or not. Um, like I say, he didn't really train today, so... But hopefully he'll be fit tomorrow and um, he can train, and then if he gets his chance, hopefully he can keep scoring goals and... Because still, I think, still for us as a team, we need to start splitting the goals again. We need to start, I say again, we need to start helping Andy score some goals. Um, everyone needs to start chipping in. Um, and hopefully you can do that. Um, Tyler's done his fair bit. <coughs> um, hopefully Jake can come in and come back in and, and help help Andy score some goals and win us some games and get us up the table. Does it give you a lift as a squad when you've got that amount of goals coming back into it? Um, to be honest, I'm not really thought too much about it to be honest uh, just enjoy me a couple of days off and um, I'll probably think about it more tomorrow um, if, he, if he's fit and if he's playing or what not and um, I know what he's all about I know I've seen his quality what goals he scored for us before um, there's not many other players in our squad that can score them goals so hopefully he brings that type of form um, back from Swindon and um, yeah just keeps firing Cheers, Cheers. You're saying there about obviously Andy winning a lot of headers I mean Chatting to the manager after the game, and he was sort of sad about it. he's getting fed up with the lack of protection Andy gets. You know, people like pulling his shirt off, and nothing ever gets given. You know, it all happened in the penalty area. I mean, as a captain, when you're out there, you must get pretty frustrated. Do you try and have a word with the referee, and you know, sort of try and sort of point out these things and say, look, any chance of a bit more balance? Yeah, uh, pretty much get sick of seeing it. Um, to be honest, um, to the referees, you can say so much, but when you're on a yellow card for winning the ball back in the middle of the field, it's it's hard to say too much and obviously it's um, it's quite frustrating so you've got to be careful what you... It comes a point in the game where you've got to literally stop speaking to them. Um, to be fair, half the time they don't even speak to you anyways. Um, there's been games where I've let them know in the first minute, first two minutes, what the, there's two men on him, he's not facing the ball, he's not playing the ball, he's pulling the shirt and I'm, I'm, I'm in the centre of the pitch and I can see basically what the referee's seeing and... We're basically seeing two different things. It's like sometimes it's unbelievable, so it's impossible not to get mad. And sometimes you might say the wrong things, which I have done from time to time. Um, but it's just I just keep trying to talk to them and try and get them on side, really. But a lot of them, it's just really difficult um, to even speak to them and get an answer and see what they see, really, because I'd, I've lost count how many times people have been pulling him, blocking him, not playing the ball when the ball's coming in the box or. And there's no wonder he gets mad. Um, and he tries to tell the referee as well, but nothing seems to get done. So I'm guessing they do some analysis, but whether they do it on that type of stuff, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, you know, as, as the manager was sort of say, suggesting it, perhaps it's almost like you can't foul the big man. You know, it's almost like anything goes. Yeah. I mean, you said Bernard yeah. had the same sort of treatment when he came on. You know, a lot of defenders think they can, because they're allowed sort of a bit more contact obviously this season, they sort of think they can have a bit more of a go. And, you say the big centre forward, the, the rest of the yeah. think, oh, he's, he's you know, just away. Yeah, it? it's, it's really frustrating um, because they're, they're two honest, two honest strikers, big, strong men who are very good at what they do, and um, they seem to get punished more than than the defenders really, and um, just unbelievable. And it's just frustrating because it obviously just it just ruins the flow of the game, ruins the the tempo, the rhythm, and. Um, that's how we want to play, and they're getting blown up for for silly fouls. It's when they're not fouls, really. Like Andy's got two, three men around him, and the fouls going against him. And it's just, but what can you do? What what can I do? What what I say that's going to change that? Um, we have meetings. I try and tell them at the start of the season what what happens and what you might be able to see, and what's foul, what's not foul, and nothing changes. So there's no point having the meeting. So just let them. All you can do is let them crack on and. Let the club email them after the game and do whatever. I hope the message gets out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and 
lastly, you were sort of saying about obviously the season, you know, you still very much is still alive. I mean, I think we spoke after the Sutton game, I think end of October, sort of three months in, and it was it was still a bit of a mess at that point in the season. We haven't really got going. I mean, do you now feel, you know, it, it is salvageable from that sort of position? Because obviously at that stage, you know, the first three months you hadn't really got any momentum going, had you? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, since the managers came in, give us a um, structure that we found and tactics that seem to work for us, uh, suits our players. And um, I think we'll have the next half a season, I think there's a lot of points to play for. And I think our style of play and our quality, I think, will come through and we'll, we'll go on a, a decent unbeaten run, which will take us in, uh, in and around where we need to be, or certainly within touching distance. And we're confident of that. Um, I'd say I felt like we did enough to get something from the game on, on Monday. Um, so just roll out the next game and um, do the same again and the results will change. It's always a good reminder also about when people sort of say about it's a long season. It is and you have got time, you know, if you, if you have a poor start or whatever, you have got time to, to turn things around if, you, if you've got some left belief. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, there's a lot of games when the, when the midweek games start kicking. We've got a few rearranged ones to, to come in, or maybe one, but the game's come thick and fast and it's just points to get on the board. And the more points we can get on the board, obviously, the higher we're going to finish. And there's nowhere out of reach at the minute. And there's still plenty of points to play for, plenty of games. We've still got everyone to play, pretty much. So um, we'll be doing our utmost and fighting for every single point.